warning. Recently, I have been studying hashtag van life. Put that hashtag into Instagram or on YouTube, and you will see all of these young people purchasing vans. The, the, the most common van is the Sprinter van. And you're seeing these people put together. Some of them are quite elaborate, but they're traveling. And at the core of this is this is the only way that people can have that type of life because they don't make any money or they don't make enough money to travel the way that they want to travel. Because I've been looking at it. And I mean, it's very interesting. Uh, you will see people living in these vans. They have stoves. They have refrigerators. They've got the dog. And I've been watching a lot of them. And it, it's um, intriguing. But money, time, and how you the reason you need to plan your life. For me, van life is a young person's game. Because, you know, as I'm revisiting the hood stories and th things that I did, the younger that you are, the more open <clears throat> that you are to certain things. Like living in a van. Because if I were to do it, because it's it's kind of waking and it's spirit in me. Uh, there was this one. Actually, let me show you. Let me find it. There's this one thing that I thought was so cool. And I found these folks. Because I, I was in Miami recently and I, I want to. I want to do it. I want to get a yacht. I want to do a yacht for a little while. I, I, that's going to be in the plans. But they're living on this boat. But the boat looks homey. The boat has like an upstairs it has a full kitchen. It, it doesn't look like they're roughing it. Like the people who are roughing it in these vans. You know, they've got a good size boat that they use. They've got a little smaller boat that they go ahead and take excursions with. I know this isn't all roses and sunshines, but once again, this took money to do. First of all, they had to buy a boat. Then they had to buy provisions. So once again, it, it's very interesting. And then they, they've got a very strong following. But how many of you have, have sat down and planned out your life said you know i want to live here i want to experience this type of life i want to how how many people have sat down and planned this out because it's very important because what i'm seeing is there are levels to this. And when I mean there's levels, typically you're going to do what your circle does. And this is once again, for you parents, I know times are hard living in the hood, paying this rent. You want to live in the best neighborhood possible for your children. That's going to dictate the school that they go to. It's going to dictate their friendships. Some of these friendships are for life. They're for life. You actually set that in motion based on where you live. So you want to live in the best neighborhood possible. <sighs> the best school system. Because, you know, I've seen some people talking about, you know, if you're black, you need to live in a hood around more black people. I vigorously disagree with that. I think you need to live in a neighborhood of progressive people, whether they're black or not. And this is a, a really big point, you know, because I have the benefit of looking back since I'm 52. I have the ability to look back and go like, whoa, 
And probably, you know, the reason I'm doing all these hood stories is it's making me remember where I was when I did this transition from a normal person to the person that I am today. Normal people do van life. It's like, hey, man, I'm going to get this van. Me and my girl, we're going to get the dog. We're going to travel around the world. You got these people who are literally driving these vans from Canada to South America. I wonder how that works for insurance. There's so many questions I have. But how many of you are living the life that you want? How many, how many people <clears throat> are living that life? So the first thing you need to do, and I'm going to give you the stages. When you're young, there's a very good chance, unless you're just an exceptional young person, you don't really know what you like and don't like. So this is where living life experimentation comes into place. Uh, now, one thing I think that's very good about this van life thing is most of the people are really young. And to travel when you're young, to meet people, to encounter different cultures, it, it will just make you such a different person as you grow. You'll be more open. You will not be the opinionated American. You will not be one of these people. I got the Lord. That's all I need. You will not be one of those people. You will be definitely open to doing some stuff. But from where I sit, this always, it, it, it still comes back down to economics. It still is hinged upon economics. It's still hinged upon money. And if you sit down and start planning, and then, you know, because once again, the first thing is just to put down how you want to live on paper. Write it down. Put this down. Then the second thing you want to do is create a vehicle. Like uh, I've done, I'm going to do some more YouTube videos because I'm getting ready to create this YouTube course. And a lot of people don't, they're not like feeling the YouTube videos. They're like, you know, thumbs down and I don't want to see this stuff. And to you, I will say you're not serious about making money. You're not serious about making money because starting the YouTube channel is one of the ways that you can get traffic. Whatever you need to do online, you're going to need a traffic source. YouTube channel, Facebook group, podcast, you're going to need something to pull people into your funnel. And this is why I'm doing the YouTube thing because Essentially, YouTube, hands down, is one of the biggest ways that you can generate free organic traffic. It will not be overnight. It will take time. Hence, this is why you got to get into the, the planning aspect. This is why you got to, you know, sit down with pen and paper. You know, if you like the beach, you want to live on the beach, put that on your goal sheet. And then work your way back. Because one of the things I've seen over and over here on YouTube is I've seen young people who are like <clears throat> over and over again, these young guys, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, they're saying, hey, I want a Ferrari. And they're they're doing it they're getting ferraris and porsches and lamborghinis because they say i want it and part of you know the, the network once again your network these guys communicate like there would be a guy here on youtube who has a r8 an audi r8 and then people hit him up and say hey man how'd you get this how'd you get this how'd you get this and he'll do videos about it he will inform because remember in history have you had the people who were hitting it big talking to the people? Because right now you have 
the folks who are at certain levels disseminating information. This has never happened before in history. Like take the dating world. You got guys who are really good with women who are putting out information on YouTube to help guys who are not good with women. Never in history has this happened before. So you really don't have an excuse. Because first of all, intention and it is the most important thing. What are your intentions? What do you want to do? Where, where are you with your intentions? Intentions are everything. What are your intentions for your life? Seriously, what are your intentions for your life? Because, you know, I, I've shared some stuff with people. And the thing is, that a lot of people just don't want to do the work. That's really what it comes down to it, because the work is thankless. The work is something that will continue to go on for a minute. The work, the work is the work. The work is what it is. You know, I've told you guys, I started this YouTube channel. You know what prepared me for this YouTube channel? 10 years in the storage auction business. Storage auction, storage auction business, if I didn't win, if I didn't buy the right units and I didn't sell them at the right price, I didn't win. And I lived in an environment that dictated that I had to take action every day. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to impart to you guys. You need to get in the habit of taking action frequently. You need to be out here getting these data points because uh, one of the things I see, and especially with some of my long-term uh, subscribers is a lot of you guys like the stories you like the hustle but you ain't taking no action you have not wrote down one thing you have not read one book i've recommended you just sitting back waiting for that magical jelly bean where you can just wave your finger and things happen and then you get massive results and i'm here to tell you it's just not going to happen Uh oh, speaking of action, Eric and Nicole, yesterday I went out and bought a Rebel T6 and voice recorder after your video. I'm starting videos talking about opening up a construction cleaning company and share my success with people. Eric and Nicole is taking action. Eric and Nicole is going to be t part of, you know, this channel. There, there's the 5% of this channel. The 5% of this channel takes action. Essentially, Erica Nicole has no idea what's going to happen as she begins this journey. But I'm going to tell you, there's going to be way more good than bad. So congratulations, Erica Nicole. This is why I did this video, for people to take action. You got to take action. It ain't just going to happen. So that's a good look, Erica Nicole. I appreciate that. Because, you know, in terms of organic traffic, you can still get organic traffic on YouTube. Can't do it on Facebook. It's very hard to pull off on Instagram, and you can get instant, you can get organic traffic on um, LinkedIn. What's up, Lost Zero Zero? Yeah, because the thing is, you know, I, I've been sitting here, I've been watching a lot of these kids who are not old enough to have years and years of experience. They're just not old enough to have all of this experience. So what are they doing? They're taking massive actions based upon their intended desire. I literally watched this kid, uh, Vehicle Virgins. He started doing, you know, within three years. He, you know, let's do this just out of high school. He's driving a Lamborghini because he wanted one and he worked toward it. This 19, this 20 some year old kid's driving a, a $400,000 car because he set his intentions on that. 
Erica Co. Oh, and my goal is to move to Las Vegas with pool and casita. Nailed it. Living at the beach sucks. New vacation, new location, new drive. All right, all right. What's up, Ben? Antonio Williams, another five percenter. One year of listening to you has changed my situation from check to check to saving 700 to a thousand a month. Been a lonely ground called a weir weirdo from always. Let me put that there. See, I like that. Antonio Williams is in the five percent. All right, T Tab started the digital marketing coast with Simple Learn halfway through the free course, Camp Full Stack course, passed the Microsoft Office Master Exam. Get these certifications. You got to start taking action. Like, one of my things that derived from my time in the boarding house was I wanted to live in a nice neighborhood. So I left West End and I moved to East Point. And it was a night, it was, it was like, if you Google Jefferson Park, Jefferson Park is an upscale neighborhood that's in the middle of the hood. There were architects, there was attorneys, you know, your environment, you know, th this, this, there's this whole notion of living in the hood. You live in a hood environment, you're going to get hood results. You live in an upscale environment, you're going to get upscale results. I'm telling you, you can't change this. What's up, Marcus Smith? 2,500 week goals changed my income drastically. Awesome. Thanks for the $2 super chat. Always winning. Thank you, Glendon, for your daily advice. Uh, About to close my second real estate deal. Woohoo. Sometimes you just got to start, even if you don't know what to do. I put in my mind I need to make 20K. And Tony Williams, your your legal scar first. First, get the money, then the power, and maybe the women if she's on the same energy. Awesome, 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 awesome. We got some five percenters here. I'm loving that because essentially, one of the things that I'm always going to do is tell you guys the truth and give you information that will yield results. And the information is this isn't going to, it ain't going to happen like that. It's just not. That's why you need to get started yesterday. Aaron Arden, Aaron V. I took action yesterday. Got four jobs to do today. If I stay home, trying not trying to sell my service, I wouldn't have work today. My new company should have 300 by 12 PM today. Another five percenter. All right. Congratulations, Aaron, taking that action. Because, see, the thing is, I don't care about Trump being in office in terms of the economics. You know, the government regulations is going to mess around with the Fortune 2000 because these are national or international companies that they will start running a file of certain laws. So this is why they spend all this money having lobbyists in Congress to fight for their best interests. But. You can make five million dollars a year and never even worry about that. There's plenty of money out here for those who want it. Plenty, plenty runs exactly. Since it takes time, we have to take action every single day. That's the that's that's the thing I've been screaming. You've got to take action because I know a lot of people don't like the message of consistency, hard work, doing. The, the you know going for the hard ones going for the gutter balls you know going for the garbage balls a lot of people don't want to do that but that's what you're going to have to do if you want to be successful coming from someone who was homeless who lived in a boarding house who now lives in a house with five bathrooms this happened because i took action What's up, Audrey Menango? I haven't been listening long, but you've completely changed my thought process as my whole day of action, business plan, and growth as a whole. Awesome. 
What's up, Lefty? Appreciate you bought a dilapidated four-unit apartment building for the low cash purpose. Thanks for the motivation. Getting those assets. Lefty's getting those assets. Ron, it's the good news is most people won't commit. The five percenters, man. I'm telling you, I, I like this is a good stream. I got a lot of five percenters because I have been saying the same thing for 10 years, and I still got a bunch of people who are still waiting on the mythical, majestical moment for their life to change, and it's just not going to change. So for everyone that's in the 5% crew that's taking action, that's doing these action points, congratulations. Pat yourself on the back because you may not be where you want to be right now, but you're heading there. Once again, I said this the other day, most of my neighbors are old who are living in these multi-million dollar houses. There's a reason that they're old. When I, when I go for my walk, for my cardiac rehab, I, I run across these people who are, you know, older than me. And then consistently I see this and they're in really good shape and they're, you know, taking care of their health and stuff. However, but they, oh, I don't see any 30 year old Lambo drivers in my neighborhood. You know, maybe if I moved to California, I would see them, but not around here. And to Ron's point, most people are not going to compete. Most folks don't want to compete. Most folks don't, um, they, you know, I saw this stat where so many people in the country cannot raise $400. <coughs> they can't raise 400 bucks. You know, I've shown you the numbers. Um, let me go ahead. Because we keep having these conversations. So many people. Here it is. Almost half of Americans struggle to save 400 for an emergency. You know, there's 330 million people in America. So we're talking about 160 million people can't save $400 for an emergency. I want you to really think about that. I want you to think of all the title pawn places, the pawn shops, the payday loans. Uh, I, was, I went to a restaurant and now they have this thing instant pay because people can't wait two weeks. I ran into this. Uh, cause I didn't know that they had changed, you know, some people still get paid the whole way, but many companies have adopted this. Like if you work Monday through Friday, that Friday, you get a check. When I was coming up, we used to put a week or two in the hole. So like, you know, you got fired, you still got a check for two weeks after that. No, not anymore. Uh, this, 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 this current pay thing, because people are so financially pressed going back to the reason that people are living in vans. Going back to the reason that people, you know, a lot of the stuff I see, like the minimalism, the minimalism movement, in my opinion, is based upon money. It's not based upon the environment. It's not based upon people are trying to be better citizens of the earth. You know what I mean, you'll get a few people like that. But I think the main reason is people don't have no money. And people like right now, millennials. Like this right here. Like this article, millennial habits are th threatening countless industries. A new study argues that millennials aren't that different from Gen Xers or baby boomers. They are how they spend their money. They just have less of it. 
Millennials are dramatically financially worse off than older generations were at similar ages. Millennial spending is the same as their parents when they were young, when it comes to proportionate income, going to things such as food, restaurants, and alcohol. They just have less money to spend. The uh, study cited census data indicating the net worth of American consumers under the age of 35 had fallen by more than a third since 1996. Millennials are spending more of their non-discretionary uh, expenses with the cost of student lent, loan debt growing by 160%. The reason that millennials are shaping these industries is they don't have the money, man. And, you know, no one has said, hey, look, I'm going to tell you, I got, I got something I need to drop in your ear. I want you to be listening to me, right? You can have anything that you want in the world. Yes, it's true. However, there's a price to be paid. And the sooner that you start paying this price, the sooner that you start taking these actions, the sooner that you start becoming a producer versus a consumer is when these things can happen when you can have the life that you want, not the life that happens upon you. You know, I'm a guy that product of a single mother household. I had a few additional things because one timing is everything. The time that I grew up in, there were still many men married to a lot of my friends Mothers and fathers, you know, they, they had dads in the house. Earl, Mr. Stewart, Earl Stewart, they had like four or five fine girls, Wendy and her sisters, Mr. Thomas. So I grew up in the neighborhood with a lot of things to model. Whereas many young men that are growing up today, they ain't nothing to model. Nothing positive. What's up, Tyra? Runs, they won't pair the expenses so they can't afford to invest in personal development business. To a point that is true, but to a point when you're making 20 some thousand dollars a year, there's only so much you can cut back. And this is one of my problems with the fire movement because they're like, everyone can do this. It doesn't matter how much you make, it matters what you save. I think that if your income is under 30K, that matters. You're making 100K, yeah, you could save 30K a year or 40K a year. But if you're making 20 some thousand dollars a year, which is many Americans are only making $28,000 a year, they ain't that much, they ain't nothing to save after bare minimum, you know, unless they're gonna, they're gonna have to do draconian measures to save money, like live in a van. Trav, that's crazy. I got an overnight security gig, like you said, to do make four fifty a week just to sit there and study. Awesome, another five percent of taking action. Uh, part of why wholesaling is booming because folks have no money, so they inherit houses, never fix them up, but can't keep up the maintenance. Same old money management prop. That's very interesting, Erica. Because essentially, you know that a lot of people who win these houses on these shows because they don't have any money and they can't pay the taxes and they don't have the credit where they can get a loan on the house so they can pay the taxes, they have to forego the prize. So th this makes a lot of sense with Eric because people don't have no money, man. Yes, Ben, it does. Loss, success, sacrifice. Are you willing to give up something for a better future? Rod Smith College definitely lack to contribute to a lack of money. Yeah, they don't have no money, man. And also, you got to look at the systemic effect of how this is going to impact the economy and larger companies down the road. This is a problem because you've got a generation. 
a big bu- a group of bunch of people in the same boat that don't have no money. This has impacts on industries and consumer purchasing down the road. People rather live in a van and work a part-time job or second job. It's only temporary to get over a hump. It's not forever. Once again, Erica, I say the reason you have all these people living in this van, living in their cars, is they have no money. And this is another thing that's happening. Uh, I was watching this um, video talking about how Americans are working more hours and purportedly we were heading from the 1960s to 1970s we were heading to this new leisure class of people working less and having more time for vacations hanging out and then it switched because people wanted you know and i I think i know when it switched when dynasty dynasty came on um larry hagman let's see who was dynasty i think this show was Dynasty the Ewings J.R. Ewing oh it was Dallas J.R. Ewing I think this show changed many people because what happened was people were not trying to keep up with the Joneses. They were trying to keep up with the Cartwrights. They were, you know, we moved from people being happy with simple things to everyone's trying to live to a more upscale lifestyle. So they're working more hours to get these things from brand name cars to bigger houses it's very interesting documentary of how the American mores have changed. So now you've got a group of people who like, we work too much. We need to slow it down. We need to chill out. We need to have balance. And you, you've got a lot of things that are at odds with each other. A lot of things that are at odds because the upscale lifestyle or to aspire to it, that is not going away. If you've ever been to China, Japan, Asians are crazy about name brand stuff. You see an Asian with a Louis Vuitton purse, it's real. You see an Asian with a Louis Vuitton belt, it's real. They don't believe, you know, they may produce a lot of knockoffs over there, but they don't consume the knockoffs. Very interesting because they want that stuff to be real. Yep. Erica, people are lazy. I got three offered because people don't show up. My supervisor let me pick my hours and days. Damn, they're begging me not to leave. Oh, I'm going to tell you, uh, as an employer, when you look at hiring people, you can fully expect half the people not to show up for the interview after you've got on the phone and talked to them. Never in my life would this have, this just goes against a lot of my old school values. Dynamics. A lot of people don't want to drive a truck, man. Screw 92, 5 to 32. Get started, man. Get started. Erica Williams, old guys yelling about gold diggers have no gold or for realize that women want to date is not doing struggle life. The Asians in Austin are keeping the high end businesses open. Asians, they live, they love that luxury life. What's up, Kareem Yee? Engineer Truth, every ABG I know has real name brand stuff. They they, they kill her about it. And they still get the Lexus. They still have the Louis Vuitton and Gucci. And they still save a lot of money because they make a lot of money. Uh, 
uh, the 80s Goldus Noel. They highlight the aspirational lifestyle, Dallas, the dynasty lifestyles of the rich and famous. Yeah, this is where people are going. Screw 92. That's that drunk on credit. Christian, I met an Australian guy yesterday at my job who's traveled around the United States in a van. He's an internet blogger. He's on his way heading up to Florida, then back to Australia. That's what's up. He's he's for that cash grab because uh, I was watching a special talking about the van life, and there was these two groups. Like you see the van life where they have the the newer, the nicely fixed up vans on Instagram, and and also this is something I've noticed that the most successful channels the girl is hot i have not seen one successful channel where the girl looked like a mud puppy not one not one so that's a key element to it yep uh tyra gibson the values are different runs i have to retrain everyone i hire going over the basics of being a solid who employees actually asset to the company Man, they don't have that work ethic. They don't have those old school values of doing a good job. Kareem, you people want the abundance lifestyle, but lack the abundance mindset and work ethic. I agree 100%. Camilla, I, see, this is, uh, I want a second income that's passive, so I'm going to have to give a full time. I don't know where to start. All right, most passive income stems from active income when i my book was 100 pure passive income i had worked a few years to get that going over so that you know you're not going to be able to develop a healthy passive income stream without building something I mean, anyone can get you know thirty dollars passive income, a hundred dollars, two hundred bucks passive income. They ain't what people are mean when they say they want passive income. They want passive income to pay the big bills, to pay the mortgage, to pay the car payment, to take vacations. They want thousands of dollars of passive income, and that's not just going to happen from some little, some little side little business you start with or your full time job. I don't mean to be mean, but you know. The reality is you're going to have to build something to get that passive income. Uh, Camilla, 2000, a lot of Asians live beyond their means. I haven't really seen that. That could be true. Henry James, your observations about Asian and consumer labels are very impacting in Southern California. They are name brand hoes, Asians. Mud puppy, that's an ugly chick. Engineering life skills. Me and my girl were sitting outside the Venice, Vietnamese nail salon when they opened. All were related, and they drove up in $60,000 plus cars. They all do the broke girl's nails. Erica Williams, the Asians and Indians here get the high tech jobs and have businesses. It's the cash flow for those high jobs that cuts the debt so they can shop high end. Because they be, I mean, you know, I live in Atlanta, go up to Pleasant Hill Road, and you will see they have banks, they have businesses. You'll you'll see an Asian in a Lex, you'll see an Asian in a Rolls, you'll see an Asian in a, a, a Lambo, and know that this Asian. It's still saving a lot of money. They're spending the money, but they have very high incomes. Henry James, in your years of business, did you experience slumps, both economic and mental? Absolutely. There was times, there, there was these things that were called droughts where you could go for weeks. I remember the longest one I had went for eight weeks and there was nothing to buy. But I had built up a customer base, so I had to go on Craigslist and buy estates to feed the beast. Oh man, yeah, that was little slumps. Engineer life skills to work for passive income is front loaded. You got to put in 5K plus hours to start getting it. There you go. 
Sean Osprey, poor work ethic, one of the biggest issues, issues I had training my staff. Godless, they 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 name brand holes. Christian Emerson, truest things I've seen. A lot of people want to make that high end come out doing anything, and part of that is because of who they see online. They see these kids making this bread, this Wi Fi bread, and they don't understand that some of these kids work very very hard. They just make it look easy. I see profits. I worked at a Chinese restaurant from the 7th to 11th grade. They all gamble. Buy Chanel, buy Mercedes. They fight about money all day long, but damn, they get it. Camille, I thought all Asians were rich because of the clothes, the parties, and the cars, but a lot of them living together are, are living off credit. Flowmaster 8, Asians and Indians have business since Marco Polo days, even way back in history. It's part of their culture, basically in their DNA. Hey man, I, I've learned a lot from Asians and Hispanics. I don't know how many times in my warehouse I would see a guy who who just got here, just got off the boat, and five years later he would have his own construction company and be driving a fifty thousand dollar truck, and he don't have credit, so he paid cash for it. Eric Williams, I'm in the Asian, Austin Asian Chamber of Commerce, and I grew up with half Korean friends, military, and now Asian friends in interracial marriage that are leaving 100K jobs around 32 because of investments. Asians, they be on that money. They be on that money. Once again, you got to look at your culture. Look at the Asian culture. You know, look, because the thing is, the Asian culture in the Indian culture, the Indian culture is coming up. Like here in Georgia, up in Johns Creek, they have a software village where of all these uh, hot tech companies starting this up there. And they get a lot of bread and investment because they build in a lot of tech up there. And a lot of people don't even know it. Culture matters. My dad was an entrepreneur, so I got to witness the process firsthand. And that that is one of the things that we need more of. We need more entrepreneurs because, you know, there are a lot of people who's like everybody ain't cut out for not being an entrepreneur. Um, if you were drowning, you cut out to breathe. And the, in my opinion, the black community is drowning. There, there ain't no time for, well, I don't want to do this because, you know, I don't like it. There used to be a cold in the black community where old people who never had the chance to do the things that you would do, they would celebrate what you've done. They would celebrate like, Oh my God, you, you doing that now? Cause they knew they didn't have these opportunities. Now that's gone. Cosmic wisdom. Uh, China employees, they ain't going to get away from that. They just seeing what's going on over here. I went to Duluth, Georgia a couple of weeks ago when there were Asian businesses everywhere, banks, doctor's office. It seems like they own that city. Oh, yeah. Plus the Hill Corridor uh, down the Buford Highway. They own that. Banks, businesses, attorneys. And on Buford Highway, you have a lot of Hispanics who own businesses. But ownership, yeah, they own that. They run that because I witnessed the change when I was still doing storage auctions because I had to uh, go up there. And I was just like, what's up with all these Korean banks? They were, they were, they were working on that way back when. Just anyway, my brother lifts and makes over 60K while building up his personal training business. He's he's busy. He's out here doing it.
engine in my Chinese friend's parents threatened to disinherit him when he bought a club girl Asian. Asians are not racist. They smart. Well, you know, I'm about to go here. It used to be in the black community that if you were messing up, you got disowned. Now we've become accepting of all kind of shenanigans. Like, you know, don't say nothing bad about black folks. This used to be the code. When I was growing up, if you was a bad person, people like you were a bad person, people wouldn't mess with you. It would mess with you. But now it's like everybody comes in and I'm going to say it like a lot of times it's unfortunate that these brothers who are killed, but a lot of times they doing something shady. I wonder, would they still be alive if they weren't doing something shady? No, this doesn't give an excuse for a racist cop to shoot them. But if you know they trying to get you, why are you going to do stuff to put yourself in harm's way? Well, they trying to get me these race soldiers. Why would you be riding around with a kilo of cocaine in your car knowing that they're trying to get you? You know, stupid don't care who owns it. It just is. Austin Long, I showed some bank statements showing I had over 40K in savings when applying for my first apartment last week. I keep telling y'all, money in the bank is a credit reference. Money in the bank is a credit reference. Money in the bank is a credit reference. Congratulations, Austin. Engineering life skills. Yeah. You know, now it's like everybody comes into the tent and, you know, kumbaya. I grew up in that era of black culture where if you were a bad person, if you misrepresented the group, the group kicked you out. Now all you got to do is be married to a white girl and you get kicked out, even though you donate, you know, millions of dollars to spell, you know, Morehouse students. But we going to keep Pookie and Ray Ray. We going to keep Ice T. We going to keep Low Dog, who just got out of, out of jail. We going to keep them. But we going to cast out the billionaires. It, it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing, man. It is one of the things that um, people just don't seem to understand. Culture is very important because typically, even as a child, if you rebel against the culture, typically, if the culture is very strong, you will return to it later on as an adult. Like all the people who didn't go to church when they were kids, but later on, they start going to church and they got in their 30s because they were coming back to the culture. I know, R. Kelly, you could stay. Robert F. Smith, get out. That's just pure nonsense. That is just craziness. But once again, money, time, and how you live, the reason you need to plan your life. Most people don't plan their lives. They just kind of go about existing. And sometimes it works out. Other times it doesn't work out. Young G Bone. People overspend on sneakers, clothing, driving, European car. I'm, I'm going to disagree with that a little bit, uh, Young Bone. People don't make enough money. Asians are a prime example of a group that spends money like it's going out of style. They buy name brand stuff, the Gucci, the Louis Vuitton. They drive European cars and they still have a high savings rate because they make a lot of money. You can still have nice stuff. You can still drive that European car, but you need to make some bread, man. We got people who are trying to shoehorn a hundred thousand dollar lifestyle in the 25k ain't gonna work it's just ain't gonna work 
Eric Williams, hence all those hipsters going to church and all the millennials getting married, returning. Yeah, the culture, if you were brought up in a strong culture, you got indoctrinated as that culture as a kid. Even if you rebelled and fought against it, you later on as an adult return to that culture. This is why it's so important. I know, Camilla, that was just crazy that they went in, but this is what people look at as important. Here's your last because I got kicked out on the daily on the reverse due to not participating in the effery. My kids always ask, why doesn't we visit the fam? I bought to one fam event. And she said, now I understand. The rule of Allah. How can we be independent of the government? Start a business. culture man because unless you do what i did where you start to think about your life when i came out that board now i came out with a plan my plan was to get these jobs that gave me viable skills to participate in the economy the reason i was in that boarding house was i didn't have the skill sets to pay the bills i was skill set deficient i didn't save money I made a lot of critical errors. You know, I was a good guy. I was hardworking. I had three jobs, but I wasn't saving no money. And when it all fell down, there was nothing. I had someone ask me the other day, like when bad things happen, like, you know, you don't pay your car note. You don't have a place to live. You give up your apartment. That's the life I had. And it was just like, whoa, that's harsh. Well, master, I drive a knockoff version of the Benz and uh, Benda, and it still feels baller through half the price. Eric Williams, I've said this before, and we agree. If they double income, at least 80% of the problems go away. The rule of Allah, you, you can start a business. You can go on Craigslist today and start a business. The government has nothing to do with that. Free your mind. The Asians, are, I know, are, are hard workers. They make high income and send some back to the family in the old country. Nathan Thomas, when you say map out your life, how detailed should you go? Like down to the socks and underwear you would like to wear? Yeah. If you want to wear baby ape underwear, yeah. Because essentially, once you set up your intention, like, I want to live like this, then the next thing is to impress upon your subconscious mind that you have the ability, the skill sets to participate in those businesses to get that bread to live that lifestyle. Many people want the lifestyle, but they don't, they don't have no plan on how to get it. They don't have no ideal on how to get it because they're not thinking about it. I mean, you know, uh, there's all this information on the Internet. There's a lot of information. You can figure out, like, how to start a business. I mean, I've had several videos like start a service business. You broke. Start a service business. You don't know what kind of business you don't you, you want to start? Start a service business. Get busy. Because the reason in the thumbnail, I have the, the this money's on fire. Time is on fire. Time is a non-renewable resource. This is why you need to get busy. The work you do today will be reflected three, six, seven, eight, nine months in the future. Like uh, this morning, I did my walk, you know, because, you know, the as uh, people were talking about in the last, compounding. The walk this morning compared to the walk a few months ago was, you know, it was fast. It was effortless because I'm getting better. But the walk this morning wouldn't have happened without the walk two months ago. 
and this is the delayed gratification. This is the stacking of action. This is the putting stuff together. I, I don't know nothing about the Netherlands. I'm talking about the United States of America where you can where, where you can do what you want. Engineering life skill, yes, mapping your life out is easy. Set your goals, figure out the goal cost, then pick some business that you like will provide the income, then work your face off to be an expert at it. Pretty much. Because, you know, I shifted. You know, the storage auction game was so fun. And I had so much enjoyment that I never thought I was going to leave. Then my partner was diagnosed with cancer. Then I got sick. So I was kind of forced out because we didn't set the business up to run without us, which was a lesson in itself. And then I got onto this Wi-Fi bread and I'm here. I'm here for it. Nathan Thomas, when you're trying to change your life, which essentially changing your mind, would you say that the current you and the future you? Absolutely. Absolutely. The big you and the little you are at war. The big you is the part of your personality and id that can get it done, that can deliver all your dreams to you. And there's that little you that says, no, bro, you can't do it. That little self-talk. See, I don't have negative self-talk. I got rid of that because I worked on that. All my self-talk is positive. Well, let's put this ideal out and let it fly. So, yes, your little you and your big you are at war. It is a world war war. And if you let your little you win, you, you're, 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 you're going to lose. So that, that's a good point. Because essentially, it's 2019 in the United States of America. There is no reason for anyone to be poor. There is no reason for anyone to be struggling. There's no reason that half of America can't come up with 400 bucks. It is a lack of financial literacy. It is a lack of action. And it's a believing in false narratives. All right. I don't know about. People trying to get Bitcoin. <coughs> Make it do what it do, man. Get out there. Start building your empires here in the United States of America. Do what you need to do. hands guard should i get a car or an apartment why don't you get both i have a buddy who's a trump supporter he was earning four hundred thousand a month under obama and it's broke under trump all because of the decision he made the president didn't matter Christian Emerson, I was a physical therapist for 18 years at the end of my PT career. The thing that messed me up was debt to income ratio, not blogging, selling PT products. Yeah, that debt to income ratio is a mother. Flow master at engineer life skills. Yep, for me, it was actually taking paper and writing down my actual intention goals or task of the day with the right words. I was amazed at the outcomes. Like if it was like magic. And this is why I keep telling you, you have to write this stuff down. A lot of people have listened to me say this for years and refused to do it. You have to put it on paper. You have to write it down. So congratulations, Flowmaster. It's like magic. It is like magic.
engine last skills the will the is fear that fear kills that's why the marine corps teaches you to charge oncoming fire the fear leaves you gets put into the enemy and they run hmm. term and soul get those clients man because when you're, you're you're planning out your life you need to write it down this is what i did this is how i ended up here Writing it down a certain way using the right combination of words will literally set your life on fire. This is what the people who are making all of this crazy money online, most of them do it. And they don't even realize they do it. They're out here making things happen. So realize that time is ticking money and time how you live the lesson you need to plan out your life so with regards to that Let me go. All right, I'm going to recommend two courses for y'all. You want to get scripture what the devil scripture days i'm gonna put that in the comment section you want to get that it's going to give you a lot of skills and you want to the power of six productivity course you want to grab this going to help you plan your day well these are game changers these are game changers Yeah, you may have to move the rule of Alua. All right, Ron. Oh, yeah, the Dream Girl profile is awesome, man. Black Caesar. I will I don't recommend vision boards. I recommend this is what if you want a certain car. Even if you're unprepared to get the car today, go drive that car. Go into the dealership and like, look, I am unable to afford this car today. In the future, it's my intention to get it. Do you mind if I drive it? And you drive that car and you, you get those real tactile feelings. If you want to live in a certain kind of property, go to open house. Go look at it and create video. Create a video of you driving that car. Create a video of you being in that house. That's way more effective than a vision board. All right. So with that, I will see you guys later. I'm going to put those two courses in the comment section for folks who come later. So with that, I will talk to you guys later.